Good morning, friends. I'm Ulysses, and this is the early morning calm stream for April 18, 2024. Are you hydrated? Are you moisturized? Mr. Life, ready? Mr. Life was born ready. Very glad to see you this morning again in the chat. So, I did some work. Woke up early. Did some, some extra work. Um, so far we've got six pages penciled. And for my own benefit and possibly yours, I wanted to look at him. Um, there will be some redrawing happening, but we can see the progress so far. Page one. Um, establishing shot of the Doan Bison Ranch. I wanted to create like a set the scene that this is this comic is the um, the natural environment the setting is is also a character and then page two establishing the conflict straight away that's something I learned from Dennis O'Neill's book on writing comics just go straight straight to the conflict don't tease it so buffalo stampede and page three introduction of spirit girl who's come by to help page four is uh her attempt to deal with the stampede. Page five. It works, but not quite the way she intended. And it creates another issue. And she has to use her animal power. Page five, the issues resolved, but then there's like kind of like a clean up time. And then the supporting cast arrives. There's a few things I mentioned. I noticed that. I noticed that my Ames lettering guide was set to make large letters because I was concerned that when this gets reduced to about 60%, um, it would not be readable. But then I started thumbnailing my next two pages and realized there's more dialogue so I made a test of lettering smaller and I think it's 60% reduction this will still be legible the way this works is these are these holes I've, I've shown it before on the stream but these holes um, you make your guidelines through these holes so there's some numbering at the bottom here it was two to nine I had it on six which 
you should be able to see increases the opens up the angle of the holes which makes the guidelines wider so I've decided I would set it to four which closes up the angle and will make guidelines closer together so you can see the difference between the lettering different size I think that'll work so that's a change I've made so I'll have to re-letter everything again And this is two pages of dialogue because we're introducing new characters. So I've used this guide here that was made by Wally Wood. This was probably done in the 60s, 50s. Um, Wally Wood's 22 panels that always work or some interesting ways to get some variety into those boring panels where some dumb writer has a bunch of lame characters sitting around and talking for page after page <laughs> so this is a good um, kind of way to inspire yourself to make your panel compositions interesting even though there's no action and here it was redrawn by Michael A. Von Oming uh, to add clarity to the uh, to the concept. I look at both because some of this, his translations, I think he got it wrong. Um, I think that he tried to clean it up and it his, some things got lost in translation but um, you know single object open panel dark foreground white background um, I see like for instance these two panels here he translated it wrong diagrammatic he means like silhouette I think whereas he drew out the details anyway I use that to inspire myself when making these thumbnails so that when I do work on the layout I'll have something solid like a more or less solid foundation at the top I wrote down all the information that was important to communicate in these two pages so that's what I worked on but because we're introducing new characters we gotta do character design work so that's what we're going to draw this morning. Just plus it's good practice just drawing people. So I thought that my uh, ranger was going to wear a ball cap. But then I realized it's winter time. He needs to wear a warm hat. So we're going to draw guys wearing trapper hat looks like these are catalog models so pretty neutral now it would be funny if he was wearing a very large fur hat so we will try some of these it's just for fun <laughs> I 
That's a very large hat. Uh, Mr. Life, there's no way to type the words? There is. Um, I can do that in either Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator or Adobe InDesign. Um, but, but, I don't want to, I, because the whole thing's handmade, um, I find that digital text that has no variation between the letters is distracting when paired with something that's drawn by hand which has a lot of variation so for example if i draw the letter a let's make sure you can see i'll draw it heavier if i draw the letter a computer will have the letter a just repeat consistently but if i draw it again it looks different than the other letter each time so that variation creates visual interest um, same if I do a straight line it's the same line but there's variation each time so I find it's more harmonious as a whole if the lettering their lettering has variation that is reflective of the line variation if I were mass producing comics and I had deadlines and all that and that was you know I had a more like <clears throat> I had a business that was that had certain financial requirements then definitely I would be taking more shortcuts like doing digital le digital lettering but in the interest of staying true to the commitment of using traditional media <coughs> I'm going to hand letter the comic and continue doing so okay well let's try we're going to start with start with the huge start with the huge hat Now, if I can remember and manga, how they do the eyes, it's more just a, a hint. Just hint at the eyes. And the mouth line is also very simple. Trying to draw small to practice drawing at that size because a lot of so many uh, comic book panels are drawn very small 
and the figures are about this size. I tried to draw big, but it's still too small because this hat is absurdly large. shoulder like that you find on a trench coat or a military coat kind of feel like a forest ranger would have this definitely pockets on the coat because this guy is going to be an avid hiker and I feel hikers like to have utilitarian clothing so lots of pockets to fit their gear in sure about beard I don't think so I feel like when you draw a beard on a character it really ages them And the hat is a good way to frame the character, frame the character's face. Mr. Red Pill, or Mrs. Red Pill Freedom, I don't know. Good morning. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're hydrated and moisturized. I hope this is a good morning for you. This morning we're doing character designs. Designing a forest ranger for our main protagonist to relate to, talk to, have an adventure with. And we're looking at very funny very, very large fur hats. Let's try it with the ear flaps up.
I like to always start with um, the center line of the face. I did practice manga style, but I, of course, am heavily influenced by American style, so I'm definitely doing the classic Bruce Dim American superhero comics square jaw. So I draw the center line so I always know, you know, where the center of the lips and the nose are supposed to go. So what I like with the ear flaps up is that I can play with different um, different shading. Like have uh, some sections darker than others. Which it's fun on pencil, but on pen, it's pens don't have a don't have a like a grayscale gradation. I do like this hat better.
show you how my sharpener works. I had never seen one like this before. So, typical pencil sharpener would be like this. It's a blade that rips off wood around the pencil to expose the graphite bit. But this is a lead holder, so there's no wood involved. I buy lead separately like this. Oops. So it comes in these packs. And each one I put in this lead holder, which is basically a sort of claw that comes out. Just put it in there. And in order to get some lead, and I like that I can control the length of the lead to go do my, you know, shading like this. And then if it's shorter, I can apply more pressure without breaking it. The way it's sharpened, it's with this device. In here, there's a, like a grinding wheel, that metallic wheel. It's got like little teeth on the side. So I place the lead inside this little hole to, and that tells me how long this should be before I put it in the sharpener. If I want it sharp or a little bit less sharp, like a bigger angle. And then I place it in here and that places the lead against the grinder wheel at this angle. And then I turn, which rubs the lead against the grinder wheel. And I can, I can feel it. And there it is sharpened. It leaves a little residue of graphite on. So most of the time I blow on it. I blow on it to the side so it doesn't put graphite onto my drawing surface. That's how that sharpener works.
do have reference for those little I wish I know what their name was um, these little straps here Feel I really like this uh, a stiff, sharp collar. As a sort of like windbreak. So his name is 
Ranger. Dave. Douglas. As in Douglas Fur. Mr. Life, put a walkie-talkie on that guy. Yeah, for sure. He's going to have equipment and stuff. Um, but I, I like that idea. How does that work? Hmm. The cops. Cops, uh... Always wear that, uh, yeah. So it's either it's pinned to the body in a few different ways. Like this one's wearing a vest, so it's got a clip on the vest. This one's clipped upside down on the vest this one's clipped to the, like the collar hmm. there is going to be a police officer too so I think it just would make sense that it would be clipped here right So we're gonna do that. So it's just basically just a box. the wire coming from it I'm gonna put an antenna so that it communicates more that it's a walkie-talkie yeah great suggestion Great. So now the next step is I have to go for a walk and think about this young man's backstory. Where did he come from? As you say, what's this great looking ranger's life? Who's was he popular in high school? Did he have a good parents growing up? Um, what sorts of events in his life made him decide to be a ranger? Hmm. So usually I do that thinking best when I go for a walk, so... I am going to do that now. Thank you so much for spending the morning with me. I hope you have a good day. I hope strangers smile kindly at you. I hope the cashier counts out your change properly. I hope your 
car doesn't have any issues. Hope you find good deals. <laughs> so now I'm going to go walk to the gym to go for a swim. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.